scientists have started to define the thresholds for life on Earth. Welcome to Microbial Minutes. This is ASM's update on what's hot in the microbial sciences, the How Hot is Too Hot edition. I'm Julie Wolf, science communication specialist here at ASM, and today we're going to highlight a paper from Nature, Ecology, and Evolution, which starts to define the limits for conditions under which microbial life can exist. The studies today are based around the Rift Valley in Africa, which is shown here uh, on the maps. We have in the uh, lower right-hand side the larger area of eastern Africa in which the Rift Valley resides, and the sampling areas which are highlighted in the boxes in the left-hand map there. Now this, this area of the Dalal area within the Rift Valley has many different poly-extreme environments. And so when I say poly-extreme, I mean that it's extreme in multiple different types of conditions. It can have very high heat, which is often extreme for microbes. Uh, it can have very low pH or high acidity. And it can also have high salt concentrations of different types of salts. And all of those can be found in various combinations. Now, the, the different unique chemistries of this area can be placed into three major categories, which the, the researchers um, classify. In one of those, uh, some of the ponds, which are super saturated with sodium chloride, will also have iron under different oxidation states. And we can see examples of some of those different oxidation states in those really beautiful um, colored bottles, which the, the coloring and the color variation of the environmental sampling is explained by the oxidation states and the various oxidation states of the iron within them. Those samples also are abundant with potassium and sulfur. In a second category, the salt canyons and plains of the Dalal and Lake Asale uh, have sodium chloride. Uh, they are super saturated as well, but they have much lower iron content, and that leads to different selective forces in those environments. And then finally, there uh, is the environment of the yellow and the black lakes, which has very high salt concentrations, but these are magnesium and calcium salts. So the the researchers wanted to look across these various poly-extreme environments to see which microbes might be present. And they did that using a variety of different types of techniques. They used DNA sequencing, of course, uh, looking at the 16S or 18S ribosomal RNA genes, which were present in the samples. They tried culturing under certain conditions. They looked directly at the samples using scanning electron microscopy. And they tried to determine which of those samples might have DNA by using fluorescence cell sorting. Now, the DNA purification was one of the more successful measures, uh, and they took DNA and they purified it out of the brine itself, as well as from solid samples around the environment. So they would take various parts of the soil or perhaps soil uh, salt crusts, as well as sediments, and purify the DNA within those samples, and then amplify the um, ribosomal RNA gene sequences, mostly using high-throughput uh, short amplicon sequencing. Um, however, in some cases, they did try to directly amplify the entire gene, um, as well as they attempted nested PCR. So that's using the initial product for a second round of amplification. Uh, and both of those results are shown in the graph here. Uh, but the, the nested results, the nested PCR results, tended to give more false positives, such as in the reagents that they were using for testing. Um, however, once they were able to determine the sequence, uh, the verified sequences were good, they observed that the majority of the sequences belonged to archaea. Archaeal sequences dominated uh, with over 85% of the sequences found um, classified within archaea. This included uh, a number of archaea that have previously been um, characterized, including the Woes archaeota and Nano Halo archaeota. Um, and Looking around at the various conditions in which they tested, they were able to conclude that there are two physiochemical barriers to life in these various chemistries. One is high chaotrophicity um, or low water activity in magnesium and calcium dominated brines, particularly. These chaotropic agents are those that can disturb the stability of other molecules and likely have an effect on the lipid bilayer of cells that may uh, be, find themselves in this type of condition. And the other condition, uh, which is a physiochemical barrier, uh, is the hyperacidity salt combination. So both the very, very low pH, in some points it was uh, a pH of zero, uh, and very high salt combinations. On the next slide, we'll see that this was uh, written up in a number of places. This, this particular study was highlighted in the New York Times with uh, one of my favorite uh, headlines, They Didn't Find Life in a Hopeless Place, in which the um, author, the lead author, Purificacion Lopez-Garcia, uh, reminds us that this study 
shows that the presence of liquid water, which is often hailed as a potential for the existence of life, the presence of liquid water on the surface of a planet is not enough to have life. And this is relevant as exobiologists begin to look at the conditions on other planets where water has been identified and think about whether or not those planets might be able to sustain life. There, the findings which were described in this paper are also important in case we send out robots or other types of artificial intelligence in order to survey um, by looking uh, using scanning electron microscopy, as some of the very, very small, those are the nano halo archaeota, some of those can be as small as 250 or 300 nanometers uh, in diameter, which is very, very small. And in fact, there were uh, different types of what this team called biomorphic imposters, which would be aggregate such as silica and other types of elements that would aggregate in shapes that were very similar to the true cell aggregates, as you can see in that scanning electron micro, uh, microscope image down there on the lower uh, right-hand side. So we'll include a link to this New York Times article, as well as a science article, a science news article, which covers both the study that we discussed, as well as one that recently highlighted niches within the Antarctic, which are also barriers, uh, potential barriers to uh, being able to sustain life. And we'll include links to that, as well as the original study down below. Today we've heard how scientists are starting to define the limits of life here on Earth, which will have lots of implications for uh, life on Earth as well as searches for life in other planets. I'd like to thank you for listening and thank Rio Ortega for production. I'll be with you next time on the next Microbial Minutes.